Hello, this is Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management and host of the Resney Wealth Report. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And if you miss any part of tonight's uh, broadcast, we replay on, on uh, Sunday evenings at 7.30. Please visit our website, ResneyWealth.com. And if you have questions about your portfolio, remember our show is all about you to make sure you're going in the right direction with that retirement portfolio. If you have a question about your portfolio, if you're concerned about a stock or a bond or maybe a mutual fund you own, maybe you're concerned about the advice you're receiving and you're wondering if you're getting any real advice at all. We're taking your calls right now and you can either call and I'll talk to you live on TV or you can call that same number and I'll take your question off here. You can give it to one of our studio producers, and then I'll bring it up on the big screen. Our number right now is 239-417-4711. We're bringing in calls right now. Again, you can call, talk to me live if you'd like, or if you'd rather, relay your question to a studio producer, and I'll take it while you're not on the TV. On my radio show every Sunday, by the way, we were getting a lot of calls, not only about gold, but about uh, Cyprus and all the events that are happening over in Europe. Is that going to have another contagion, and is the stock market going to go down? Let me tell you something, folks. The big mistake that I find a lot of investors make is they base their emotional decisions around what they're going to do with their portfolio, meaning they put too much emotion into what they're going to do with that portfolio, and almost 100% of the time, your emotions tend to be wrong. I can't tell you how many calls we had after the 2008 uh, correction and investors basically went to cash in 2009 at exactly the wrong time. What I want to tell you is this, there's always going to be turmoil in the economy, in government, government budgets, there's going to be another fiscal cliff, there's going to be another Cyprus uh, year from now, there's always going to be issues. The only difference today than 20 or 30 or 40 years ago is how much you hear about all of the problems in the world that are never any different than they were again 20 or 30 years ago. News is 24-7. Most of these programs repeat the same message over and over and you the investor gets nervous so you make bad investment decisions. I want to tell you the number one problem you the investor face which is not having an investment strategy and not following it. I see this all the time. Client, our potential clients come to our offices, whether it's in our Naples or a Fort Myers office, they'll sit down with us. And one of the questions that we always ask is, can we get a copy of your investment strategy? Now, if it's a do-it-yourself investor, somebody who's handling their own money, very few, in fact, about one out of 100 people that come into our office that are managing their own money are actually not managing at all. What they're essentially doing is buying stocks or mutual funds they've heard of, and there's really no strategy around what are you buying? How does that fit into the portfolio? More importantly, when do you sell an investment that is no longer working or is not doing what it's supposed to do? I see that a lot. That same problem with a non-investment strategy happens to a lot of investors who are using these Wall Street companies or insurance salespeople or so-called advisors. Remember, the vast majority of so-called advisors use misleading titles so you think they do actually more than they do. If you're not working with a registered investment advisor, which is different from the catchy title advisor, you probably don't have an advisory account, you probably have a brokerage account. In a brokerage account, you're responsible to manage your own money, your so-called advisor or broker is not. So again, if that person doesn't have an investment strategy, that means you don't either. So how are you going to figure out what you should buy and more importantly, when you should sell it? We see this happen all the time. By the way, there's two Wall Street investment strategies that have basically failed the last 12 years. Let's talk about it. Passive investing has failed. It's a failed investment approach. Let me talk a, about, a little bit about passive investing. What is passive investing? You sit down with Mr. Broker or Mr. Advisor. He basically gives you this nice looking pie chart that tells you, let's put your money in five or six or seven different investments. And it's really more of a buy and hold approach. The whole premise that they tell you is by buying five or six or 10 investments, some investments will do good, some investments won't do good. The problem is why would you own investments that are going down and not doing well? They don't fit into that pie. 
So what happens is because that person doesn't actually have a strategy, they put you in a lot of investments. It's more of a buy and hold approach. Let's talk a little bit about buy and hold. I want you to say no to passive investing, and more importantly, I want you to say no to buy and hold and asset allocation. Let's talk a little bit about what asset allocation is. Again, it's this pie. You buy a bunch of investments. You watch them go up. And in 2000, you watched them go down. In 2001 to 3, 4, 5, and 6, they came back again. And in 2008, everything came back down. This is called buy and hold investing. And unfortunately, that hasn't worked for investors in over 12 years. I don't think it's going to work the next 12. And if that's your investment strategy, unfortunately, I think you're not going to do very well. Wall Street always wants you to hold on, and they always tell you, let's set it and forget it. I see this repeatedly throughout uh, my 27 years in the investment business. Remember, we're a, a fee-only money management firm. We do not believe in set it and forget it, and neither should you. There's times that you need to own investments, and more importantly, there's times you need to sell and protect your retirement. So if you've been lulled into this pie asset allocation approach, this buy and hold approach, I can pretty much guarantee you're probably not too happy with how your portfolio has performed the last 5, 10, and 15 years. If you've got a uh, question about your portfolio, we're taking your calls right now at 239-417-4711. Remember folks, the biggest risk you have is not having an investment strategy and not following it. Do you and can you produce a written investment strategy on how your money is being managed. Ask your so-called advisor to send you a copy of the way your money is being managed. If they can't produce one, it basically tells you exactly what I've been telling you, which is you don't have one. And that's going to cause the biggest risk to your investment portfolio and your retirement. I'm going to go to a quick little break. I am going to take phone calls at 239-417-4711. We're taking those calls live and off air, you can call with that uh, same number and give your question to a student producer. I also want you to visit my website. We do have some upcoming workshops. They're called Adapt or Fail. These are great for the person who's lost money in 2000 and 2008, and they don't want to lose half of their money again. Go to my website for more information about our upcoming workshops in Naples and in Fort Myers. I'll be right back with your calls and questions after this. <music> Hi, I'm Brian Resney. If you're like many investors, you've lost a lot of your retirement assets due to poor investment management or being sold investments that are often better for that so-called advisor than you. Most so-called advisors are just salespeople or brokers for investments their firms represent. No real advice at all. If you're tired of bad investment advice and are ready for positive change for your retirement, call my firm for a consultation. Don't settle for bad investment advice. There is a difference. Call us today. And we're back. We're talking about investment strategy and the biggest risk to your retirement again, and that's not having one. Ask yourself this simple question. In 2008, did you actually reduce risk in your portfolio? Did that advisor reduce risk? Did they start raising cash? Did they add alternative assets to your portfolio before you saw your portfolio erode 50%? Probably for most of our radio listeners, you were lulled into this false uh, thought that your actual advisor was watching your money. The problem again is you're probably in a brokerage account and you probably have a broker. Their job is not to call you and it's not to reduce risk in your portfolio because remember, in a brokerage account, you're responsible to manage your own money. If you want a better approach, find a fee-only registered investment advisory firm like Resney Wealth Management, where risk management is an, an important part of how we manage our clients' portfolio. I want to go to my first call. This one is Dan from Boquilla. Are long-term mun municipal bonds a good choice to stay in? Dan, probably one of the worst choices is long-term municipal bonds, long-term corporate bonds, and long-term government bonds. They're all kind of in the same boat. Think about this. Bonds go up when interest rates go down. 
It's like a teeter-totter, and when rates go up, bond values go down. It's the opposite. Rates are at, at historical lows. We're actually at rates we haven't seen in 40 and 50 years. Rates can't go a lot lower. They can probably stay, stay, uh, stay where they're at, but realistically, over the next three to five years, I would anticipate rates going up. Ben Bernanke told you he's going to keep rates fairly low, at least for the next year and a half to two years, or until unemployment gets to 6.5%. So ultimately, what's going to happen with long-term bonds, they're either going to be very mediocre return over the next three to 10 years, or you're going to lose a lot of principal when rates go up. Rule of thumb, every 1% interest rate increase will cause a 20-year bond mutual fund that has bonds in there that are 20-year maturity or individual bonds that are 20-year maturity to drop about 20% in value. 20%. Ask yourself, if you think you're a conservative investor by buying bonds, can you afford a 20% drop? What if interest rates go up three percentage points? You could see long-term bond mutual funds and individual bonds drop 60% in value. What I'm going to tell you is this, Dan. If you own a lot of long-term bonds, I would seriously get a second opinion and start scaling or selling those now to protect your portfolio. The best you can do is mediocre interest rates and or possible huge losses if rates go up. You can always call my firm for a consultation. We've had literally dozens of new clients over the last couple years that were sold long-term bonds and bond funds by Mr. Broker, not understanding how these things work and the big risks they have. Call our firm for a consultation. There is a difference. We invite you to experience it. I want to go to my next call. This is Bill from Punta Gorda. What do you think about the complications from Cyprus? Will that spill over to the U.S. and cause a stock market crash? Bill, I don't think so. Let me tell you what's happened. Cyprus has a GDP gross domestic product about the size maybe of uh, Fort Myers as an example. It's pretty insignificant to the world population and the world economy. What ultimately could happen is the contagion from Cyprus spills over to Spain and Italy, which are much bigger. The problem at Cyprus is they've got, they have a lot of bad uh, debt on their books in their bank, and they're actually looking at going after their bank depositors to basically help and bail them out. It was ruled that they can't do that. So in essence, it looks like taking all the money or a lot of the money of their bank depositors is not going to happen. What I'm going to tell you is the Cyprus may be a good emotional thing for the news broadcasters to keep talking about, but again, keep the emotions out of your portfolio decisions. What I like to do is either use moving averages or relative strength. I'm going to tell you this. The U.S. stock market, especially small and mid-cap, have been on a tear this year. Relatively strong they are, and I ultimately b believe as we see the economy in the U.S. continue to slowly improve, there's a possibility that relative strength will continue, and I think that Cyprus will be off in left field and everybody will forget about it in the next two to three months. My next call, Daniel in Naples. I know you've been telling a lot of the public to reduce uh, bond or bond funds. What about high yield bonds? Daniel, great question. We're getting a lot of calls from our radio listeners and our TV listeners. And by the way, a lot of new clients are coming to Resney Wealth Management because they're realizing maybe they need some change to that portfolio and a better structure. What I'm telling investors is this, traditional bond mutual funds, traditional bonds, whether it's munis, corporates, or treasuries, these things, when they're intermediate to long-term maturity, meaning about anything more than is a five-year maturity. So if you buy a mutual fund that buys a bunch of bonds, some uh, mutual funds are a one- or two-year average maturity of the bonds they own. Those are okay right now. You're not going to make a lot of money, but you're going to have a safer principal base. When you start to get longer in the maturity, you're taking substantial risk for almost no return. So what you're doing is investors were lulled into, hey, bonds are safe. Folks, bonds are not safe. Bonds can go down in value significantly when interest rates go up. So Daniel, what I would tell you is look at your portfolio. Do you own a lot of bond and bond mutual funds? What's the average duration? If you don't know, call our office, set up a consultation. You'll, you'll be glad you did. I'm taking calls right now at 239-417-4711. We've got about 15 minutes left of today's program. If you want to get your call in live, 
Call me right now. I know we've got a number of calls that have come in that have gone to the studio producer, but if you would like to talk to me live about a question about your portfolio, whether it's about a stock, bond, mutual fund, maybe somebody sold you four or five annuities at one of those free lunch seminars and you're realizing that wasn't the smartest thing you ever did, call me in the studio. Again, 239-417-4711. And please visit our website, resnywealth.com. We've got a lot of great information on there. You can also sign up for one of our upcoming workshops, Adapt or Fail. This is perfect for you investor who have lost money in 2000 and 2008 and you want to protect your money in the future. And again, sign up for our newsletter. You'll be glad you did. My next caller, Tim from Naples, I rarely hear from my broker and his strategy is buy and hold, which has not worked. I really enjoy your show and planning on coming to your upcoming workshop in Fort Myers, I'm assuming. Tim, um, we get that comment a lot. Again, I talked earlier in my show, what is your investment strategy? The Security and Exchange Commission, first off, published a report, I don't know, about six or eight years ago. And they basically surveyed investors just like you. And they, they, the simple question was, do you know the difference between a broker, broker dealer, and a registered investment advisor? 76% of the people didn't know the difference. You know why? Because Wall Street isn't a, going to come out and say, hey, guess what? We don't actually manage your money in most instances. We're actually acting as a broker and selling you investments that are often better for our firm than for your portfolio. So because your broker or advisor doesn't call you, that should not be of any shock, but most people are always shocked that they don't get that magic phone call, that they're not getting any real advice, because again, a brokerage account is brokerage, it's sales. You're responsible to manage your own money. This is probably the first time you're learning this because of our TV show. If you want to get more information, the difference between an advisory account and a brokerage account, Daniel, go to my website, resneywealth.com. On the right side of the homepage, for free, you can download the fiduciary questionnaire. It's 12 simple questions every investor should get answered. There's also an answer key that tells you the difference between an advisory account and a brokerage account. It also tells you how to figure out if you've got a salesperson or a real money management firm that's working in your best interest. If you're like my last caller and you have a question about your portfolio, please call me right now at 239 417-4711. Again, whether you have a question about a stock, bond, or a mutual fund, maybe somebody sold you a bunch of annuities. Maybe you're hearing some of these commercials on TV about free 10% money and 8% returns. Folks, remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Don't get suckered into the next annuity by somebody basically telling you what you want to hear instead of the facts you need to read about in your portfolio. I'm going to go to a quick break. I'm going to come back with more of your calls and questions. Again, at 239-417-4711. And please visit our website. If you want, you can also call our office for a consultation. There is a difference. We invite you to experience it. I'll be right back after this. <music> Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. Do you know the biggest risk to your retirement and investments? One is entrusting your hard-earned money to someone who doesn't work in your best interest. The other is a lack of a detailed investment strategy to meet your goals. Both risks can be devastating, but both can be corrected. Resney Wealth Management, fee only money management. Don't settle for questionable investment advice. Call my firm for a consultation. There is a difference. And we're back. I hope you're enjoying today's program. By the way, again, if you miss any part of today's program, it's going to be rebroadcast on Sunday evenings at 730. You can also visit my website, resonatewealth.com. If you want to get some great information on how to protect your retirement, your portfolio from bad investment advice, we give you an education nobody else gives you. Go to my website, for free, you can go through our, our investment article library. You can also download that fiduciary questionnaire. We get a lot of great comments on that, that report. It basically helps you figure out, is your money really being managed? Is the firm that you entrust your money, do they have a legal obligation 
to work in your best interest. Most investors are shocked to find out that they have a brokerage account, that their money was actually never really managed, and the firm that they entrusted their money all those years didn't have a legal obligation to work in their best interest. That's why I always encourage investors to do just a little bit of research, download that fiduciary questionnaire off our website, it's free, educate yourself. If you can keep getting bad investment advice and expect different results from that same person, unfortunately, the only blame you can take is on yourself because you didn't make appropriate change when you realized you had a problem. I'm taking phone calls right now at 239-417-4711. Uh, let's see, Rob in Fort Myers. Do you still like the Vanguard Emerging Markets symbol VWO? Recently it dropped below its 50-day moving average, but it's still above its 200-day moving average. Should I sell or hold? Rob, let me tell you what. A great way to basically invest in the emerging markets is through ETFs, exchange-traded funds. In fact, the only way that we invest our clients' money, if we're going to look at the emerging markets or almost any investment sector, is typically through exchange-traded funds because of low-cost structure, transparency, and none of the shenanigans of Wall Street because of the way these things are structured. Uh, specifically about Vanguard's VWO, this is large-cap emerging market stocks. It's in our stable. What that means is we are looking at that as a potential. We do not own large cap emerging markets right now, and I'm going to tell you why. Every single day, we look at all the main investment sectors around the world, whether it's emerging market, whether it's small cap in the U.S., whether it's treasuries, gold, currency, oil. We look at all these different uh, asset categories or sectors. We rank those on a proprietary system based upon relative strength. Merging market large cap is actually towards the middle of our ranking system. It's out of our top five. So what that means is if it's not in the top five, it's relatively weak and it's either flat or trending down. As I've taught investors for years, never ever buy an investment on its way down and never own relatively weak investments because historically, relatively weak investments underperform. So we have it in the stable. We keep looking at it. If it comes back a little bit and it gets relatively strong in an uptrend and it's relatively strong, it may be added into our portfolio, but we do not own it now. I'll tell you what we do own, though, is we own the Wisdom Tree DGS. That is emerging market small cap. What's interesting is large cap emerging market, generally speaking, year to date, they're down between 2 and 10% in value. Most of the large cap emerging market, they're weak. Small cap emerging market, kind of interesting, up around 4 to 5%. So you could be down 10% or you could be up 5%. That's a 15% uh, spread. What I'm trying to teach is this. Own relatively stronger sectors. Now we're coming obviously into the month end. And one of the things is as we re-rank our system after today's close and then the next day, we look at if we're going to change up any of our top five sectors within our managed accounts. That's proven to reduce risk and actually help increase return. So again, we don't own it. I know it's under its 50-day moving average and above its 200, but it's relatively weak against a lot of other sectors. I own relative strength in our client portfolios. I don't own relative weakness. We sell that. If you're like uh, my last uh, caller and you have a question about your portfolio, in the studio, 239-417-4711. We're getting a couple calls in just about our firm and consultation. We are taking new clients. We do have a, an account minimum, though. We do take larger clients typically. You can go to my website for more information at resneywealth.com. We have that up on the bottom of the screen. Again, resneywealth.com. We are taking new clients. If you are looking for active money management, not set it and forget it. Our number one priority for our clients' money is risk management. If you've lost a lot of money in 2000 and 2008 again, you didn't have any risk management in your strategy. We use risk management because we want to make sure we can help preserve and protect from major catastrophic movements in the markets. Risk management is important. If you don't have it, call my firm for a consultation. We'll put that number up on the bottom of the screen. And you can also visit our website for more information and also to book a consultation at either our Naples or a Fort Myers office. I want to go to my next caller. This is Eric from Fort Myers. My advisor is really pushing hard on a variable annuity for my 401k uh, rollover. 
You stress stay away from annuities. Why is he so adamant? Sounds like your advisor, and I could tell you he's not an advisor at all. He's acting in a broker capacity because he's selling you a commission-based annuity. That would be brokerage. Sounds like he needs to make a car payment or a house payment and he's trying to line his pockets, which is what is better for him than your portfolio. Never ever buy a variable annuity or an annuity inside any kind of 401k plan, an IRA, it makes no sense. The reason variable annuities are sold and pushed so hard and he's adamant, because he makes a big giant commission. Variable annuities have horrific investment options normally, they have big back end surrenders and they have high expenses. Those high expenses, those mediocre investments, and then again, no investment strategy, because who's managing those, that allocation or whatever you decide you're gonna do, that's going to come against junior money and it's going to take away from your return. Don't buy an expensive annuity to help pay for your broker's next car payment. Brokers love selling annuities because they pay some of the biggest commissions on the street. I find little use for variable annuities in an investor account. You should too. What I would suggest is call our office for a consultation. Find out what real money management's about from a firm who has a legal obligation to work in your best interest. Ralph from Fort Myers, what do you think of gold stocks and gold? I own both and have been hit hard. Sell or hold? Ralph, what I'm going to tell you is this. Owning both gold stocks and gold doesn't make any sense because generally speaking, if one's going up, they're both going up and down. If you own gold stocks, boy, have you been hit. Year to date, if I look at most gold stocks, they're down 15 to 25%. Even if you look at the two ETFs, GDX and GDXJ, they're down about 20% each. Bottom line is gold is weak and gold stocks are even weaker. Get out of these ASAP. What you want to do is you want to look at relative strength. I know everybody's talking about what's going on with all the turmoil in the world. We've always had turmoil. You don't have to own gold. We owned gold up until December of last year, three months ago. We sold our gold position because it started getting relatively weak. It fell out of our top five ranking on relative strength. Since we sold gold, gold's down 6%. The, the sector we replaced it with, which was IJH, the mid cap in the US is up about 11. That's a big difference in return. Relative strength is a great way to know when to buy and relative weakness is a great way to know when to sell. I'm going to go and we got to wrap up a little bit here. Our commitment to you under our investment management and financial guidance, you will sleep well, you will enjoy life, and you will have less stress over your investments. If that sounds like the kind of firm you want to work with, with active money management, which includes risk management, and you lost money in 2000 and 2008, call my firm for a consultation. There is a difference. We're not Wall Street, we're not a so-called advisor, we're a full-time active money manager and protecting your portfolio is number one priority. Have a safe and profitable week.